I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At nine minutes after ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. Oh, Steve, they see a lot of people. That's their job. It doesn't mean you've got the part. I'm perfect for it. That's going to be a big movie. The great thing is, they don't want a name. <laughs> they want an unknown. There are a lot of unknowns in this town. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Hello, world. I'm William B. Williams. I sure hope you are enjoying tonight's mystery theater. Speaking of mysteries, he said, one of the great mysteries in radio for low these many years has been the fact that I've kept a job. Daily, 10 to 1, which incidentally are good odds, too. 10 to 1 here at WNEW. I do a show. Uh, the mystery is, as I said, how I stay on the air. Well, uh, there are many ways of doing that. One way is to be related to the chairman of the board, which I am. Another way is to try so hard each day, which I do. Of course, the best way is just bring you the best in pop music, which I do, too. So why don't we go back to the Mystery Theater, and I'll see you uh, mornings from 10 to 1. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. When you shop, remember that there's more than just the price of the product to consider. There's also the reputation of the seller. And if you have a question about reliability, check with your local Better Business Bureau. It's also good practice to check the warranty, what it does and doesn't cover. It's also a good idea to find out if you have to pay for shipping if the merchandise must be returned. And check to see what other charges, if any, you're going to have to pay. Another way to be a careful shopper is to know something about the policies of the store or the seller. Consumers should find out what the return policy is. Does the store give cash refunds? Does it provide credit on future purchases? Does it allow returns only on certain products and not on others? Look, you better get all the facts before you buy. This has been a consumer tip from your Better Business Bureau. This is Cicely Tyson. No matter what color we are, what language we speak, how we worship, or what customs we follow, there's a little recording machine in our minds, a sort of television set or movie screen that can be turned on any time, day or night. It's about to happen to Steve Corey as he shows his small daughter some old photographs. Daddy, who's that boy in the white suit and hat? That's your daddy when he was a sailor. But gee, at first you look so young. Well, that's because I was. Tell me the truth now. Do you think your daddy was handsome? Yeah, I guess so. But I like you better now because I didn't know you then. Steve's daughter doesn't know it. But she's just turned on her father's recording machine. Angie, why don't you go in the bedroom and watch TV with your brother? Okay. There he goes. The feet up on the coffee table. The eyes closing. He's remembering when he got off the aircraft carrier and headed for Hollywood, California. He's going to remember a lot of things that happened to him. And then he's going to remember how he almost didn't survive. And that's only the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Overnight Guest, by Joyce and Stanley Director. Our stars, Stanley Director and Joan McCall. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. I know. We'll give Mom a Sears Best Food Processor with attachments. Oh, sure, money bags. Listen, Sears Chop, $10 off, so it's only $49.99. Oh, three of us could buy it. But would Mom like a Sears Food Processor? Sure. Complete with four attachments, it can quickly knead bread, chopped meat, shred cheese, puree tomatoes. Hey, pizza! <laughs> Sears Best Food Processor, only $49.99. Save $10 till May 26th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. 
Here's a riddle for you women to solve. I'm one of the first things on in the morning, one of the last things off at night. With slacks, skirts, and shorts, I look so right. Who am I? Give up? I'm the shirt. The wear with anything shirt from Sears. I come in both pretty pastels and assorted prints with short sleeves and tailored styling. And I'm Easy Care Polyester. So go with the go with anything shirt. For smart spring and summer fashion, buy the shirt in the Mrs. Sportswear department. Eastern, Central, or Pacific time, Mother's Day is an important time. Remember Mom with a timely example of sophisticated design. A Seiko watch from Sears. Seiko has a reputation you can count on in styles that range from sporty with leather wristbands to elegant bracelet watches in white or yellow gold color cases. Choose Mom's precision-made Seiko with 17 jewel or quartz movements from Sears. But hurry, Mother's Day is coming May 13th. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Steve's recording machine is turned on to the year 1957. The place, Hollywood, California. The event, Steve arrives in town. He heads for the bar he and his Navy buddies used to visit when they were on Liberty. Hey, Mike! Who turned out the lights? Who's that? It's me! Steve Corey! Who? Come on, Mike. You know me. I come in here all the time. I mean, whenever I've been in town on Liberty. On Liberty? Uh, Steve Corey. Oh, yeah. Well, Steve, how are you? I didn't recognize you without your sailor suit. What are you, AWOL? I'm out. Huh? Come on, let's celebrate my freedom. Drinks for everybody on me. Oh, you got great timing. There's only five people in the place. What's the matter? Things slow? Business will pick up. Fear not. Steve Corey's here for good. <laughs> you, uh, drink scotch, right? Right, with water. See, and you thought you didn't remember me. Ah, uh, it's all coming back. You're from back east, right? Yeah, Philly. Me? I'm from Chicago. You going back? No way. This is my town. I'm going to put my name all over it. That's right. You're an actor. Compliments from Steve Corey. The next, uh, uh, hey, who do you want to be, Steve? Uh, how about, uh, Marlon Brando? Good choice. You kind of remind me of him. Compliments from Steve Corey, the next Marlon Brando. <laughs> hey, you're all welcome. Hey, Mike, how come you're always behind the bar working? I know you own this place. So why don't you have somebody work for you? I like to work. Uh, excuse me, young uh, man. I don't mean to interrupt, but I just wanted to thank you for the drink. That was very nice. It's been a long time since anyone bought me a drink. I can't believe that. I bet everybody buys you drinks. A pretty lady like you. Well, I used to be pretty when I was young. Well, I happen to like older women. Oh, thank you. You know, I couldn't help overhearing your conversation before. The fact that you're an actor. I'm psychic. Do you believe in that? The way I feel now, I believe in everything. Well, sometimes I get these feelings, and sometimes they come true. I've got a feeling about you. Good or bad? Oh, good, of course. You're going to be an actor, a big actor, even bigger than Marlon Brando. <laughs> I knew there was something about you I liked. <laughs> Mike, give this lady another drink. <laughs> We have a lot of actors who stay in this hotel. Anybody I'd know? You'll meet them. That's not what I meant. Would I know them from the movies? Look around. If you were a successful actor, would you stay here? Hmm, I guess not. Another thing, there's no cooking and no parties in the room. That's perfect for me. I don't cook and I just got into town so I don't have any friends. Yet. Once a week, the maid changes the sheets and cleans your room. There's a payphone in the hallway if you need it. And like the sign on the door says, we don't give change. Here's your room. There's no view. I wanted a view. Look, I'm busy. This is the only room we have left. You want it or not? I guess I'll take it. That'll be two weeks in advance. Hello? Hey, Mom. Guess who? 
Steve. Yeah, you're so smart. How's my best girl? So where are you? On the other end of the phone. How's Pop? Don't change the subject. Your little boy got an honorable discharge. Congratulations. When are you coming home? We haven't seen you in a long time. I look the same. I'll send you a picture as soon as I get some professional ones made. I'm going to stay in California. I miss you already. Look, it's not forever. I'm a fast worker. I'll become a big star, and then I'll be able to buy you your dream house. Oh, that's very nice. But meanwhile, how are you going to live? You never were too good at doing things for yourself. The Navy taught me a lot. I'm staying in a nice hotel until I get settled. Don't worry, Mom. I'll be okay. Where's Pop? I'm right here on the extension. Uh, hang up, Francis. I want to talk to my son. Steve, you take care of yourself. And you call once a week. Okay, Mom. Don't let her get to you. She means well, but she doesn't understand us men. You stay in California. That's where everything is being done. TV, movies. You're going to be an actor. I, I read in the papers here that Warner Brothers is looking for some new faces for their television shows. Call them. You're a new face. You need anything? No, Pop. I'm fine. Don't be afraid to ask. You know, if I got it, you got it. It's my investment in your future. Make me proud. Be an actor, a big star. I'm dependent on you. Come with me on a magic carpet ride to view Sears Kismet Classic Collection of Rugs with the beauty and luxury of genuine oriental creations. Behold, 13 exquisite patterns inspired by great masterpieces of Persia and the Orient. Look upon all nine sizes of Kismet Classic Rugs, each of a 100% virgin worsted wool pile. Deep, dense, luxurious. Riding a rug is okay, but decorating with Kismet Classics is heaven on earth. At most larger Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop the room held several Sears brass-plated lamps, one switched on. The finely plated antique satin shade illuminated the furniture softly. Another lamp turned on, and another. The patio doors blew open. The green brass-plated lamp nearby, with its heavy base built for stability, did not budge. The room glowed in the brassy elegance that these Sears best lamps command. Create your own hauntingly elegant moods with Sears brass-plated lamps at most larger Sears retail stores. Steve invested some of what little money he'd saved while he was in the Navy and enrolled in an acting class. He had the ambition. Now he hoped he had the talent to become a famous Hollywood movie star. How marvelous to be young and have dreams. Except that you eventually have to wake up. <coughs> All right, class. Yeah. Class, before we start, I'd like to introduce a new student, Steve Corey. Steve, for tonight, I'd like you to just observe, see how we do things. First, let's do a couple of improvisations. Then we'll get into our scenes. Uh, the location is the zoo, the gorilla cage. Gary, you be the gorilla. Yeah. Uh, Barbara, you and Kent play a marriage couple arguing outside the gorilla cage. Gary, uh, you try to get their attention. Okay, let's have fun with it. Uh, 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 Gary, Gary, not so obvious. More from within. Thank you, class. We did some good work tonight. See you Thursday. Uh, Vicky, Steve, stay for a minute, please. Vicky, how are you doing time-wise? Can you handle another scene? Yes, I'd be happy to. Good, good. Why don't you and Steve get together and work something out? Hi. Hi. Uh, how's tomorrow? Fine. Here's my address. I get home from work around 6. Uh, come about 6.30. Think about what scenes you'd like to do. <laughs> Steve Corey. 
You're early. I know. You see, I don't know my way around L.A. that well, so I gave myself enough time in case I got lost. But I didn't get lost. <laughs> Come in. This is some apartment. Thank you. The last time I saw these many paintings in one room, I was in a museum. Don't you like paintings? They're all right, I guess. What are on your walls? Nothing. Nothing? Your mother didn't put anything on the walls? No. My mother is the type of woman who is very neat. Extremely neat. In order to put a painting on a wall, she would have had to put a nail in that wall. In her mind, and this is only my opinion, that would have ruined the wall. <laughs> Why does that woman have a swan's neck? That's a Modigliani. He painted all his women like that. That's what made him famous. You like that kind of stuff, huh? I see you've got a lot of records. What's with all this long hair? You buy them? Some. Most are presents from boyfriends. Boyfriends? Have you got one of those things now? <laughs> yes. You like them? Well, what kind of a question is that? You're getting too personal. What scene would you like to do? I don't know. Something that shows what a good actor I am. I think uh, you might be good in a scene from Golden Boy. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Give everybody a machine gun but me. I was a tough kid. Sure, sure. <laughs> what are you doing? John Garfield? Sure, sure. What does that have to do with Golden Boy? Nothing. I just felt like doing my John Garfield impersonation. <laughs> Hey, Mike. Who turned out the lights? Uh, where you been? Everybody's been asking for you. I didn't know I was so popular. You are in this bar when you buy drinks for people all the time. You know, I was getting worried about you. You're a crazy kid. Listen, can I talk to you like a father? Let me ask my mother. <laughs> Steve, you spend money like there's no tomorrow. You're not in the Navy now. You were able to blow your bread and you always had the ship to go back to where you slept it off. They fed you, they gave you clean clothes. You still act like you can go back to the ship. Stop blowing your money. You're going to need it one day. You know something? You're right. You're right. What can I say? Don't say anything. Just start thinking before you do things, okay? Okay. Here's a red quarter. Go play some music. You don't have anything I like. What are you talking about? You love the music on my jukebox. I'm tired of it. You should get some new music. Something different. Like, uh... How about some Beethoven, or Brahms, <laughs> or uh, Tchaikovsky? <laughs> that sure is different. Uh, you don't mind if I don't take your suggestion. I mean, in the 20 years that I've owned the Palace Bar, you're the first one who's requested those guys. Before I put any new artists on the jukebox, I wait till I get at least three requests. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm getting too classy for this bar. Give me my usual. Just a minute, Mr. Corey. Hey, you call me Steve. The owner has requested that I collect the money owed him before I allow you to return to your room. Do you have it? Oh, really, Mr. Fancy Pants? Well, I don't have it. I'll give it to you in a few days. You said that a few days ago. Now, your government check came in the mail today. Where's the money? Well, well, who do you think you are? That's none of your business. Now, where do you think you're going? Yes! Your belongings have been taken out of your room. You can have them back after your bill is paid. You can't do that! I need those things. You can't take a guy's stuff. I'm really sorry, Steve. It's my job. Call me Mr. Corey. <laughs> Just a second. Just a second. Who's there? Me. Who is me? Don't you know who you are? Oh, boy. Steve? Hello? Steve, it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry for bothering you at this hour, but I don't know. I shouldn't have come. Uh, I'll go away. Forget I was here. Oh, get back here. You can't just come to my door at 4 o'clock in the morning, say forget I came, and walk away. Why did you come here? I, I, I've got no place to go. I got kicked out of my room. I got no money. I was walking around the street for, I don't know, a couple hours. I got tired. I got cold. Mm. You're the only person I know, and I only know you a little bit. Your couch looks so good. Can I sleep on it? Oh. Just for tonight. I promise Tomorrow I'll figure something out. 
Please. Come on in. You're not only beautiful, you're nice. Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. Chills run up and down your spine. There's a creeping sensation at the back of your neck. You're listening to CBS Radio Mystery Theater. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for these hour-long dramas of suspense, adventure, and the macabre. Heard seven times a week on most of these stations. Here's a sample of what we mean. Quiet, man. Listen, and you'll hear it. I don't hear anything. It came from the bow, a cannon and the sobbing of a little child. And then it changed as I went forward to look. I swear it came aboard and, and went down, down below. I was afraid, but I followed it. Oh, Doctor, I tell you, it went right into the captain's cabin. Listen here for CBS Radio Mystery Theater seven times a week on most of these CBS Radio Network stations. This is Lucille Ball, here to make a personal appeal to every American. Since the 1880s, the American Red Cross has been stepping in when there's been big trouble, like a hurricane. But nobody has to tell you the Red Cross is there when a hurricane strikes. So let's talk about the other Red Cross, your neighborhood Red Cross. They teach kids to swim. That's good, Eddie. And they train about every lifeguard on every beach. It's possible to look into it. We can get in touch with the local chapter. They help veterans get on their feet. They help people relocate after fires. Are you comfortable? Okay, now relax. They collect and distribute blood. They give a hand to the older folks in your town and do scores of other jobs. It's running very nicely. It's easy to see why we've got to have Red Cross, and only you can keep Red Cross ready for the little emergencies in your neighborhood. And the big ones. Help keep Red Cross ready. Vicky allowed Steve to sleep on her couch blossomed into 21 more nights. Three weeks. And it doesn't look like there's an end in sight. I'm home. I'm in the kitchen. These are for you. Oh, Steve. How did you know that lilacs are my favorite flowers? Oh, I love the way they smell. Thank you. But you shouldn't have. I wanted to thank you for everything you've done. That's the way I am. And this is only the beginning. Today, flowers. Tomorrow, the world. You're nuts. What do you like? <laughs> Pecans or almonds? Where are you going? To finish getting dressed. I've got a date with Chuck. Another date? I don't know how you do it. Standing on your feet all day, cutting hair, class a couple of nights, rehearsing, then going out with Chuck. Don't you get tired? Sometimes. You should stay home more often. You look a little pale. You may be coming down with something. Chuck will understand. Your health is more important than a date. You want me to tell him? Tell him what? Tell him that you can't go out tonight. You don't feel well. I feel fine. Now, don't fool around, Steve. You know Chuck doesn't have the best sense of humor. He wouldn't know you were joking. What do you see in that guy? I've never met a dentist with personality. Did you know that people become dentists because they don't know how to carry on a two-way conversation? Oh, he's here, and I'm not ready. Steve, answer the door and be nice to him. Good evening. You still here? It's so nice to be wanted. Where's Vicky? She'll be out soon. Would you like to come in? No, I'll wait here. What's the matter? Do I have bad breath? I know how touchy you dentists are about that. Vicky, hurry up. So tell me, what are your plans for Vicky, besides tonight, I mean? Vicky! You must make a lot of money. I do all right. Did you ever think that Vicky may be after you for your money? You can talk all you want, but actions speak louder than words. I'm the one Vicky goes out with. I'm ready. Let's go. Good night, Steve. Good night, Vicky. Don't stay out too late. Remember, you haven't been feeling too well lately. Don't you feel well? Yeah, we don't have to go out tonight if you don't feel well. I feel fine. <laughs> Ah. 
How long is this going to go on? Please, Chuck, I don't know. I'm not a fortune teller. You told me three weeks ago it was only going to be a few more days. Well, what am I supposed to do? He has no money. I can't just throw him out. I couldn't do that to a dog. I'm not going to do it to a human being. Oh, boy, has he got you conned. For crying out loud, Vicky, Steve is a healthy guy who's just lazy and got a good thing going. And you're just jealous. That's right, I am. You think it makes me feel good when I pick you up and Steve answers the door? Then I bring you home and Steve is sleeping on the couch? I'm supposed to be your boyfriend and I don't like leaving while he stays. Would you react this way if it was a girl? No, of course not. That's different. Why should it be different? We're talking about a human being, a person. Look, if somebody needs help, you give it. You don't say, sorry, you're a man. If you were a woman, I'd help you. I have a lot of friends who are men. That doesn't mean I have to have a sexual relationship with them. Oh, boy, do you always have to be so explicit? Yes, I do, because that's the only time you listen to me. Well, I'm telling you right now, so don't say I didn't warn you. I don't know how much longer I'll put up with this. Well, if that was an ultimatum, and it sure sounded like one... We'll find out, won't we? Oh, Vicky, don't get mad at me. You're a soft touch, and he knows it. It's written all over you. He's using you. Don't you see it? He doesn't care about you. All he cares about is himself. Don't let him take advantage of you. <sighs> hey, Vicky, you look tired. I am. I'm too young to feel this old. You see? Your past is catching up to you. Come here and sit down. I want to show you something. Ready? Mm -hmm. Charlie, you come into my dressing room that night and said, It ain't your night, kid. I could have killed that bum. I could have been the champ. What am I, Charlie? I ain't nothing but a bum. <laughs> Why, Sherry, when I walked into that nightclub place, you were singing. And you smiled at me while you were singing, and you winked at me a couple of times. Well, I guess I'm kind of green. I didn't know much about women then, cause they're different from men. Well, huh? I don't hear anything. <laughs> Shouldn't there be some applause ab about now? Steve, you do impersonations. That's not what acting is. Acting is very simple. But the simplest things are sometimes the hardest to do. Acting is not acting. Where are you going? To sleep. Wait a second. I don't understand what you just said. Acting is not acting. I don't want to get into it now. I'm tired. Boy, it's okay for you to go out till all hours of the night with Chuckle. You're not tired then. But when I want to talk, you get tired. How dare you try to make me feel guilty for being tired? I guess you don't know what it is to be tired. Why should you? All you do all day is lie on the couch. Well, you better get yourself a job real soon, because I'm not going to put up with this much longer. I'm going into my bedroom now, and I don't want to be disturbed. Vicky, it's me, the big bad wolf. No talking, huh? You still mad at me? Well, I don't want to talk to anybody who doesn't want to talk to me. That's too bad, because I got some great news. <sighs> the only great news you could tell me is that you're leaving. She spoke! I could hardly hear her, but I saw her mouth move. The silence is broken. All right, Steve, what's the great news? First, I went in to see this agent, number 32, my lucky number. I knew he liked me when he didn't throw me out of the office. That's it? That's the great news? I'm not finished. He not only liked me, he loved me. He said, Kid, you're gonna be a big star. He picked up his phone, called some big producer, told him all about me, and boom, I'm a star! Are you trying to tell me you got a job? It's as good as a job. It's an interview. They have to see me first before they give me the part. Oh, Steve, they see a lot of people. That's their job. It doesn't mean you've got the part. I'm perfect for it. It's Diary of Anne Frank. That's gonna be a big movie. The great thing is, they don't want a name. <laughs> they want an unknown. There are a lot of unknowns in this town. Hey, Steve, it's not that bad. <laughs> Give me another drink. 
You don't need another one. Don't tell me what I need. Put it on my tab. No more. What's the matter? You're getting so wealthy you don't need my business? So I owe you a little money. I'll take care of it. The government's a little late with my check. It'll get here. Don't worry. I'll pay you. Come on, be a pal. That's what I'm trying to be. This town stinks. You know that? No garbage on the streets, but it stinks. Because the people don't know how to treat people. They made me feel like a hamburger that nobody wanted to eat because it didn't have any lettuce, tomato, onion, or ketchup on it. Some big shot said I wasn't good looking enough. You should have seen him. He looked like Quasimodo. Those people wouldn't recognize talent if they tripped over it. Tell me the truth, Mike. Do you, uh, do you think I'm good looking? Steve, all I can say is I wish I looked like you. And I'm not the only one. Thanks. You shouldn't have counted on that part so much. But I was so right for it. I know what I can do and what I can't do. I'm not about to do Shakespeare, but that part I would have been great in. I just need a shot. Yeah, you picked the toughest business in the world. My father picked it. I didn't hear that. I said, it's only tough when you don't make it. What are you going to do now? What do you mean? Are you going to get a job? Well, that agent said he'd try to send me out for other jobs. I'm not talking about an acting job. I'm talking about a regular job. A regular job, huh? Well, I don't have any skills. You must have some. What did you do in the Navy? I was a baker. I baked bread for 3,000 guys. How many places do you know that need somebody to bake that much bread? 200 pounds of flour, 20 pounds of lard, 15 pounds of sugar, 7 pounds of salt, one giant can of powdered okay, egg. Okay, okay. But there are other jobs you can do. You don't have to have special skills. I don't want to do anything else. I want to act. We all can't do what we want. I have to cut hair. It takes many years, if ever, for somebody to make a living. Just a living in this profession. In the meantime, you have to eat. You can't keep depending on other people. Um, so that's it. You want the money I owe you. Okay, I'll call my father. He'll send me some money and I'll give it to you. You haven't been listening to me. Yes, I have. I heard everything you said. You heard me, but you weren't listening. Steve, you've got to get a job and start paying your own way. I'm not helping you by letting you stay here. Yes, you are. We'll help each other. When I make it, you'll make it. You'll be my leading lady. Well, I may be throwing my career down the drain. But you've got two days to get out. Take off on your vacation or to work this summer with Sears four-piece outfit. Wear the jacket, shell, and skirt, or wear the jacket and shell with pants. Or choose a jacket and shell with two pair of pants. You can even wear them as separates. Now that's getting mileage out of your Sears four-piece outfit. Breezy fashion prints and sunny solids. So whatever combination you put on, you'll take off in style. From the dress department at Sears. For Mother's Day, give mom a hand. Yeah! With handy appliances from Sears. Prices have been cut on Sears' best food processor, 14-speed blender with jars, and a push-button self-cleaning broiler oven. Save money and she'll save time on ironing day with a spray steam-and-dry self-cleaning iron. So give Mom a helping hand on Mother's Day. And save at Sears. Yay! Sale ends May 26th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Zip and Dash. Zip and Dash dresses from Sears Budget Shop are ready when you are for a quick-paced round of shopping or a leisurely day at home. They're Easy Care Permasmooth Polyester and Cotton to help maintain a crisp look straight from the dryer with little or no ironing in a choice of zippy colored prints in misses and half sizes. So zip up a sunny attitude and be on your way in Zip and Dash dresses at Sears Low Prices from the Budget Shop. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. Cicely Tyson again. And here's the concluding act of Overnight Guest. Who's there? Steve. Who? I can't hear you. Steve. Oh, my God, Steve, your face, your clothes. Three guys, they beat me up. Oh, well, come on in. Let's, let's get you cleaned up. 
Oh, here. Oh. Sit down. I know I've got a first aid kit here somewhere. Oh, oh, here it is. Now, this iodine may sting. Ow! Oh, oh. I, I, it's not that bad. I'm just chicken. Who were those people? I don't know. I never saw them before. You mean they, they just beat you up for no reason at all? There's a lot of sick people in this world. Did you tell the police? No, what can they do? I've been in a lot of fights, and you just don't call the police. It's sort of a code. It's not like they broke anything. A couple of scratches, some ripped clothes. In a couple of weeks, I'll be as good as new. <sighs> but meantime, can I stay here a little longer? I, I can't apply for a job looking like this. They'll think I'm a troublemaker. Of course you can stay. I'll go make you some hot soup. Brilliant. You're such a genius. What an idea. And it works so beautifully. Ah, it's so nice to be home. Kid, can you spare some change for a drink? Hey, you look familiar. Don't I know you? No, no. Hey, how about that change, whatever you got? Just a second. You're Chief Petty Officer Hayden. Remember me? Steve Corey. I was the baker on the USS Philippine Sea. You used to come down all the time for extra bread. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember. What happened to you? You left about a year before me. How come after 20 years in the service? You loved it. It was your life. It was my life. Now, this is my life. I always wanted to be a bum. You want to talk about it? Maybe I can help. You want to help? Just give me some money. It'll ease your conscience. I got a great idea. Why don't you come home with me? I'll make us something to eat. We'll talk about old times. It'll be fun. Hey, you always were a naive kid. I don't want to go home with you. All I want is a drink, and I'm not getting it. Standing there listening to fairy tales. <laughs> Steve, what'll it be, your usual? No, no more drinks. I've been thinking. I drink too much. I gotta cut down. <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you. I shouldn't be agreeing with you. It's bad for business, but uh, too much of this stuff isn't good. If you feel that way, why do you own a bar? Well, I'm not one to judge. People are always gonna drink, and they'll need a place to do it. This way, I'm my own boss. Not many people can say that. Believe me, it's a good feeling being your own boss. You got everything figured out, huh? Well, I'm a lot older than you. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I want to be somebody. I want respect. <laughs> don't we all? But we just don't get it. We have to work for it. Steve, you home? I hope not, because it's not his home, it's yours. I wonder where he is. Do you ever wonder where I am? Of course I do. I mean, I would, but I usually know where you are. From nine to about seven, you're in your office. After that, you're either home or with me. I'm very boring, aren't I? No. You're just stable, reliable. You want something to drink? Yeah, some juice if you have it. Orange okay? Fine. What's that on my refrigerator? Looks like a letter. What's the matter? Uh, You're shaking. Here, give it to me. I'll read it. Dear Vicky, I'm sure you'll be glad to get rid of me. I caused you a lot of trouble and inconvenience, and I'm sorry. I will pay you back every penny I owe you with interest. It oh. took me a long time to realize what you were saying, but better late than never. I'm going to start doing things for myself. I'm going to get a job and pay my own way. Um. I'll also be doing some thinking about my life and what I want out of it. You'll always be in my thoughts. Stay the way you are. Thank you, Steve. Poor Steve. Well, it's about time he left. Let's hope he doesn't come back. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Come again. Hey, uh, Steve, I'm leaving now. Uh, you're in charge. You know, I'm really happy things are working out with you. 
All my regular customers tell me how nice you are. You're a good kid. Keep it up, you might get a raise in your paycheck. I've only been here a couple of weeks. Don't you have to wait a while before you get your first raise? Sure, but I've never had a kid work for me while he was going to school studying to be a lawyer. It must be tough. Besides, you never know. One day, I may need your services. <laughs> <laughs> I really miss Steve. I wonder why he dropped out of class. I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to see me. Are you kidding? He was crazy about you. Then why doesn't he keep in touch? Every week he sends me money wrapped in blank paper. He doesn't even write anything on it, not even hello. There's no return address on the envelope. I don't even know where to look for him, if I wanted to look for him. Hey, didn't he used to hang out in a bar in Hollywood somewhere? That's right. The Palace Bar. You think he still goes there? Well, doesn't hurt to try. What can you lose? Maybe I will. Excuse me. Uh, are you Mike? Oh, that's me. What can I do for you? I'm looking for, um, Steve Corey. Does he still come in here? Yeah, once in a while. Not too often anymore. Do you know where I can find him? Where he lives? Well, first... Why don't you tell me who you are and why you're looking for Steve, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Vicki Lipton. Oh. Steve was staying at my place for a while, but uh, I've lost touch with him. I was uh, wondering how he's doing. So you're Vicky, hmm? Oh, Steve used to talk about you a lot. Listen, why don't you leave me your number? Just in case he comes in or I hear anything about where he is, I'll give you a call. Thank you. I'd really appreciate it. Heard anything yet? No, not a word. Well, it's a small town. You never know. You may run into him one day. Probably when you're not wearing any makeup. Yeah. <laughs> Why do I have to like a guy like that who just takes off, leaves a letter saying thank you, and that's it? Why couldn't it be Chuck? I tried, I really did, but it, it just wasn't there. Hello? Uh, is this Vicky? Yes. Who's calling? Mike. Mike from the Palace Bar. Oh, hello, Mike. I didn't think I was ever going to hear from you. <laughs> it wasn't easy getting the information. He's very busy these days. He doesn't come in anymore. Oh, well, maybe I shouldn't bother him, then. <laughs> bother him? Bother him? Men love to be bothered by beautiful women. I found out where he's working. Oh? In a gas station at the corner of Highland and Van Ness. He works from midnight to eight in the morning. Listen, when you see him, tell him I said hello, huh? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mike. Good news? I don't know. I feel funny. Uh, I never chased a guy before. What am I going to say to him? Oh, you'll think of something. Listen, tell him how you feel. I'll leave. Don't go. He doesn't get to work till midnight. Stay with me till then. I don't think I'll make it alone. Well, come on, let's go to a movie. It'll help you relax. I hope I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> Yes, miss. Help you? Well, hello. Hi. Uh, I just uh, came in for some gas. I didn't know you were working here. Fill it up? Yes, please. So, um, how have you been? Fine. And you? Uh, fine. Have you, uh, been getting the money? Yes, uh, thank you. How's old Chucky? Oh, he's fine, I guess. I don't see him anymore. Good. He wasn't right for you. I knew that when I first met him. You didn't seem too surprised when I drove up. I knew you'd be coming. Oh. Mike called me and I told him it was okay to tell you where I was. You rat, you knew. Why didn't you keep in touch? There were things I wanted to do first. Like what? Grow up. I'm going to school. I'm learning a special skill. I don't plan on pumping gas all my life. What special skill? Law. I'm going to be a lawyer. Oh, that's wonderful. But what about acting? I'm not really giving it up. A lawyer has to be a good actor. I I'm really stunned. You've done so much. Uh, 
I guess the best thing that happened to you was leaving me. No. Uh-uh. You've got it backwards. You're the best thing that happened to me, period. That's why I'm doing all this. For... For... For you, I guess. Because... I love you. And I... I guess I love you, too. Why did we wait so long to tell each other? Well, <laughs> I guess because we're both stupid. <laughs> we sure are. <laughs> Do you know you've never kissed me? Guy wants service. Uh, I'll be right back. Will you wait? After all we've been through. Do you think I'm going to let a little gasoline come between us? Wake up. Come on, wake up, sleepyhead. Uh, was I asleep? Yes. Everybody's asleep. The kids are asleep. I'm the only one who's awake. Listen, you had a big smile on your face. What were you dreaming about? I don't understand what's wrong with me. After 15 years of marriage, I was dreaming about you. Sears National Automotive Sale. Now, save $36 to $76 on a set of four Sears steel-belted radial tires. That's great savings on the most popular radial in Sears history. And the Sears heavy-duty shock can help save you from some of the jolts, jars, and jerks. Help save you some money, too. On sale now, only $5.99 each. Save 14% on America's best-selling shock. Installation available at most Sears tire and auto centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop this is my first night camping with my family of five. Now I'm really glad I packed my Sears family-style tent. It's Sears' best tent, tested by Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to conquer Mount Everest. This tent stands six feet nine inches in the center and has a sewn-in ten by fourteen foot floor. It sleeps eight, plenty of room for my family, and even the dog. We like the windows that can be zipped shut from the inside and this large front canopy. Sears' best family-style tent is built to be lived in, and if it's good enough for Hillary, it's good enough for my family at most larger Sears retail stores. Your mom. By nature, she's different than any other mother in the world. Whether she's social, romantic, offbeat, or as classic as apple pie, you'll find a special fragrance to fit her nature at Sears. For Mother's Day, choose Revlon's Charlie for the contemporary woman on the run. Chantou, the essence of ever-so-soft romance. Or Prince Machibelli favorites like Windsong, Aviance, or Cachet. This Mother's Day, discover gifts of fragrance that capture the nature of every woman at Sears at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Overnight Guest was written by Joyce and Stanley Director. Produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Stanley Director and Joan McCall. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Peggy Weber, Byron Kane, Barney Phillips, June Foray, and Lou Krugman. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CVI.